In this video, I'm going to be breaking down exactly what I think and why I think it in a live online game of Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Now, if you're new to the channel um, and you don't know what my channel is about, my channel is all about getting better at Madden 21. So if you want to get better at the game, go ahead and click the subscribe button at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. I upload eight videos every single day that are designed to help you take your Madden game to the next level in Madden 21. Okay guys, so I am running my new offense um, today in a live online match. Now I'm actually running this in regs, um, and the reason why was I wanted to show you a gameplay of both regs and mutt, especially now that they just announced that the Madden Classic is coming to regs. I'm going to be trying to uh, obviously lab that as well and, uh, and get prepared to potentially try to uh, compete in that. So we're going to be labbing a little bit of regs. Regs is actually, personally, it's my favorite way to play Madden. Um, I just like it because it's just simple, right? I mean, you just you load up and you play. Now, again, with abilities and stuff, that does change things, but I still think the Packers um, are the number one team in regs to be able to use. So... Um, so that's what I play to do. Now, uh, starting out of the game here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out with my PA cross. Now, uh, PA cross is truly one of the best plays in the entire game. And if you have not gotten the ebook, I show you several different ways to run this. A lot of people only know one or two ways to run this. I actually show you, I think, five to seven ways to use this one play um, to really open up your offense and really kind of be the, the the pillar play of your offense. And then I go through other plays as well in the ebook, like curl flat corner, inside switch, tight end corner, HB off tackle, slip screen. You know, pretty much all of the different plays in the in the um, the gun bunch tight end. The, the bunch tight end is such an effective offense. And again, if you have not picked it up, all you got to do is just click the link in the description uh, to be able to pick it up um, to be able to pick up the whole scheme. So real quick, one thing that I do have to do, because I don't have my depth chart set up with the Packers, is I need to go ahead and sub in, make sure my roster is set up. One of the little tricks that I like to use with my roster, especially in regs, where you don't have, you know, you don't have edge protector on both guys, or, you know, different things like that. One of the little tricks that I like to do is essentially identify where their best pass rusher is. So for the Cowboys, their best pass rusher is Demarcus Lawrence, who's a left end, who's oftentimes going to line up on the right side of the defensive screen so if that's the case then you know i'm able to basically identify that and we're going to start off the gate with a nice touchdown to the best crossing route in madden 21 from the pa cross out of the uh bunch tight end offense and you know again i really believe it's the best uh crossing route in the entire game and again one of the things that i want to stress to you to always say especially if you get the ball first on offense is to make sure that before you get on defense You've set up their uh, coaching adjustments. It's going to make it a lot easier um, just to get your adjustments ready, just to get your game plan ready for the defensive side of the football. So make sure to do that. Um, obviously, if it was up to me and I won the coin touch, you always want to kick the ball to start off. Kicking the ball to start off is really, truly the way to go because it just it honestly almost guarantees that you have an opportunity to steal a possession in the course of the first little bit of the game so that's another key key little thing that i like to do now it looks like this guy is going to jump on offense here now and is going to lock in so you saw i set my coaching adjustments on defense i'm still running my nickel 335 wide uh defensive ebook which you can pick up in the description as well the 335 wide is an absolutely insane formation in my opinion it is the best formation um, in the entire game for the defensive side of the ball. And what's really cool about the Green Bay Packers in terms of what you can expect from them uh, in regs is they basically have the perfect, almost perfect lineup for this defense just as far as um, it pertains to running it in regs, their ability to man cover, their ability to you know basically just lock people down with man coverage, um, and also just their personnel, right? Having safeties at linebacker is not something that's not a big deal um, you know, for this team to be able to do. Now, right there, he's going to go play action uh, starting out of the gate here, and we're just going to basically go out and get in with Savage. Savage is an absolute savage um, in this game. I love using him as a user. Uh, I think he is probably, next to Isaiah Simmons, uh, probably the best user in all of regs. So, really, regs is not, I mean, yes, they are definitely different. Um, yes, it is definitely different than Mutt. But it's not necessarily like, I mean, it's not a ton 
uh, different. And so you're still going to run a lot of man coverage. Um, you're still going to want to make sure that you're always doing that. Uh, right there, that was just really bad user by me. I clicked off of Savage. I should have known it was going to click me on to um, that other guy right there, and then I could have potentially gotten a pick uh, on that ball or clicked onto the linebacker. Right here, we got the tight end wide open again. And right there, Amari Cooper with, I think, probably route tech was why he was able to get open there. Now, if that continues, I actually like to um, switch you know, my corner Mac matchups uh, and different things like that as the game goes on. Uh, right here, he's going to throw it up, and Jackson's going to get the user pick over the top. And uh, good defensive stand by me. He thought he could bomb me out of that Z spot and go with that little double move route. Um, he does have good route running on Amari Cooper. Um, and obviously Amari Cooper is a great receiver. So I can see why he wanted to go to that. But ultimately um, it did not work out in his favor. So uh, real quick. Whoops. Got a little bit of a technical issue here. Let me see if I can get that fixed. Sorry about that. Let's see what's going on with that. My capture card completely came unplugged. <laughs> oh, I unplugged it from the console. No wonder it's not working. Okay. Give me one second here, guys. Let's see. All right, we're back. And we're not going to get a delay game. Oh, we did get a delay game, unfortunately. All right, tried to move, I tried to move my my screen close closer to me, and I end up getting a delay game. National live internet. That's what you get sometimes. Anyways, um, here PA cross more PA cross here more of the same. Um, how he is going to start to user uh, over the middle there. A lot of people will user the drag, and it's actually really interesting to me that the people user the drag so much because the drag's really not the best route. Like, it's one route, um, but it's not the best route. The best route on this play is this crossing route. And so when people choose to use the drag route, it really, really opens up this uh, this crossing route right here to Devontae Adams, obviously. So, all right, so offense is still cooking. Defense is playing pretty good, too. Um, defense didn't look as good as the offense did, but um, let's see here. Um, that was a massive mistake. I just got super lucky. I've noticed that one one a couple times um, in the last couple games here that I have if I don't double team this guy right here when I do that delay fade, oftentimes that my tight end will like go up field, um, and nobody wants that to happen here. But as you can see there, the best crossing route in the game got open one more time. Rogers misses it for a touchdown. Now this guy's doing what I think a lot of people will do. Um, when they start seeing this offense, and that's essentially what he's going to do is he's going to run a lot of cover four um, on me. That's where this setup really comes in handy. Um, it looks like he's actually going to max cover. We're going to go ahead and aggressive catch that. We got a great animation from the user catch, and we're able to get a first down. That's where the play like tight end corner, and I actually really wasn't running a lot of tight end corner. Um, really at all, uh, and then I'm starting to get so much cover four that I feel like I need to run this, or at least need to have this in my arsenal, because you see right there, if they run cover four, it's a one-play touchdown right up the seam, right to Devontae Adams, and the offense gets back on the board, so sorry for that technical difficulty, um, hopefully you guys can just laugh it off in the comments, we're able to get it fixed for you, and uh, we are up 14 to nothing right now on this guy. Now, defensively, the strategy is the same. And I've actually switched. I got a piece of advice from one of my members, uh, one of my subscribers, Seth. He was talking to me about my defense. He said, you should really consider man aligning it. Now, a lot of pro players are playing a lot of man coverage, and I understand that. I personally would rather play zone out of preference. I would rather play zone. I do recognize that man coverage is super, super hard to beat. So I have started using a little bit more man coverage. But what I've actually been doing is something that my friend Hoodie um, was talking a little bit about on his channel um, in the beginning of the Madden season. And that was basically to essentially run your defense like this right here, as you see, I'm man aligned. Now, if he's going to, if, watch, if he motions somebody, it'll basically automatically fix my defense. And if he doesn't, then I just have to be aware of the holes um, that the defense might have. As you can see right here over the top, Perry Nickerson, in my opinion, one of the best and most underrated cornerbacks in Madden 21, able to get the pick. And the offense, and the defense is two for two on picks. Offense is two for two on um, touchdowns. So hopefully we'll be able to continue that, um, that rhythm 
and keep hitting it hard. But again, as you can see here, you know that that was a simply a zone setup right there. And as you saw, um, you know we're able to to make the play. So, anyways, here uh, he's going to cross man this with a linebacker. That's not going to work. Devontae Adams is just too good on that crosser. Uh, as you can see there, it gets wide open and gets really really nice separation. Now, one thing that I actually have been testing a little bit is if they run cover four, if this setup right here from Crow Flat Corner might be a little bit better. Um, he ab ab absolutely went to a cover two right there. This is an amazing setup for cover two, as you can see. One play touchdown, and the offense is clicking on all cylinders. If you guys want to pick up this offense, again, that link is in the description. If you want to pick up the defense I'm running, the 3 through 5 is in the description as well. Um, both offenses, or both offense and defense are in there for you guys. But really, you know, everything's clicking right now for me on all cylinders, except for my uh, capture cards. I accidentally unplugged it halfway through the game. But, um, but anyway, defensively here, we're just looking to come out and keep everything in front of us. Once you get up big on somebody, one of the things that you have to do is you have to learn how to close out games. And closing out games, really simply, um, it comes down to identifying what routes are they going to use. What routes are they going to use to get over you? Are they going to use post routes, crossing routes, corner routes? What are the number? What are the go-to passing routes that somebody can call that they would have I issues with that? So, uh, my plan here is to come out and run a lot of cover two man. I think cover two man is one of the hardest defenses to bomb over the top. Really, the only thing that bombs it is um, deep post routes, and so that's where my user could come in handy. And basically, if I see any kind of deep post route, that's really where I'm going to be focusing my attention on. So you're going to see a lot of man coverage here from me. Um, just prime and uh, let's see here. I got my uh, my my adjustments mixed up. So he is going to go to a sl little slip screen right here. Um, and again, our job is to just kind of make him have to drive. Uh, so far, the offense has not been stopped yet. Uh, and so what we're kind of anticipating. Um, is that we're going to be able to continue to be successful. Obviously, we have to watch, you know, Amari Cooper right here. And, of course, as I say that, he hits an absolute laser over the top of the defense, too. Uh, you guessed it, Amari Cooper over the middle. Uh, and so right here, you know, again, this is just all about we're going to sit in that cover two man. And what we're going to do this time, because we have a spy on the field now, if he rolls out, we can do that. He's going to go up top, and Will Redmond, with all that speed, is going to do a nice job um, of getting the pick. That was kind of a matchup thing right there because Will Redmond has 90 speed and Jarwin, I think, only has like 80, 82 maybe. Um, I think he might even be in the 70s for speed. Um, we're able to get the pick, able to get back on offense and back in control. Uh, as you can see right there, Redmond able to pick off that route. So you're going to see a lot of that when you go to man-to-man -to -man coverage uh, in this game. Right here, I'm going to go to inside switch. This is a play that I really, really like to use. You know, just in situations like this where I've kind of established a couple of different things. This is really just a change-up type of play right here. Um, but he is running man-to-man -man coverage, so I do got to be careful a little bit with that hitch route. But that hitch route, because you motion it, um, you see it does a really, really good job. Now, right here, uh, what I'm going to do, and of course I messed up my audible, I'm going to run some tight end corner. And what I like to do when I run tight end corner is I love to have this you know, kind of this double, you know, double little whammy approach here um, for how I play this, and everything's going to be broken down. He's actually literally blitzing, I think, nobody on this play. That was a really risky throw. I probably shouldn't have thrown that. Um, I was just trying to hit the running back. But really, this, I wanted it to set up this play right here. I'm going to go back to curl flat corner. Curl flat corner is my personal favorite play um, in the entire offensive scheme, and you see why right there. I mean, just absolutely torches. Cover three, cover four, cover two, really any zone coverage that they run, um, this play gives it a ton, a ton of trouble, as you can see on the sideline there. So right here, we're going to go back to tight end corner. Now, the way we're going to run this is essentially we're going to kind of do a little bit more uh, of this, you know, kind of flood concept on that side now. Um, as you see here, this corner route, it's going to just run and run and run, get over the cover two, and that is another touchdown for the bunch tight end offense. As you can see right there, you know, any zone coverage that they run, if they run zone on one side or the other side, you're going to be able to absolutely kill zone defense with this. It's going to force them to play man coverage. And if you have good route running on your field, you actually have really, really good lasers uh, for man coverage. Even if you don't have good route running, there's ways to get open um, against the man coverage. But it does always help to have 
route tech or you know a good route running receiver that has over 90 route running and regs um, that definitely helps so that's why this is the perfect like this is truly the perfect offense for the Packers because you don't need any hot route abilities like you don't need slot apprentice you don't need hot route master you don't need any of that to run this you just the one thing that is like really really nice to have is gunslinger and then uh, if you can uh, have a route tech corner or route tech wide receiver, which obviously the Packers have both, uh, and they have that receiver with over 90 route running. So right there, uh, a little bit of a nice little natural man switch. I haven't seen that um, so far this year, but that was a, a nice little man switch at a bunch uh, that he just hit us with. So, you know, really the defense has done its job too. I mean, the defense has pitched a shutout. It's played really, really well. Um, just you know, kind of locking things down. Uh, we really haven't blitzed a lot. So what we're going to do right here is we are going to send some pressure. And really, we're just going to send pressure here and then just essentially watch, you know, Amari Cooper. And, of course, as I say that, he hits me over the top with Amari Cooper. Great read by him. Um, and we're going to go back to the same thing. And because of the situation, uh, we're really trying to take that away. And we're almost able to get the pick there with Perry Nickerson. What we're doing with our zone or with our man um, coverage, you know, kind of adjustments is we're shading our coverage down and then we're shading our coverage inside um, to really try to take away things on that side. As you see there, the pressure is so fast, he has to make a decision quick. Now, right here, what we're going to do um, is we're going to run with some seam flats. You see here, you get really nice alignment when you run the man aligned version of this, and really you can kind of take that away. That was my responsibility right there. I actually ruined it. Um, that was all on me right there as a user. Defense did a great job of taking away the streaks. Um, it was my number one job on that play to take away the crossing route. And I thought the, I don't know why I thought the slot would do, you know, be would be that right there. But he is going to go with a little fake. Blake Jarwin makes up for his pick earlier and um, is going to go in on the fake field goal. So he is going to get 28-8. to eight. Now, um, he's still down three scores. So, you know, not too much stretch right now. If the offense can go down and score three here before half, that's really going to help because it's going to solidify the offense being up by four scores, um, which would be really nice. Because I think right now we're by 21 or 20 points. We really want to get up by 25 um, because that's a for sure four score. So we can't do that with three, but we can get pretty close. So uh, if we get three on this drive, that's a win. You know, really, um, the biggest thing is we can't, you know, obviously give him the ball back. That would be detrimental to the, off, you know, to the game plan right here. But uh, going to go back to curl flat corner, my favorite play uh, in the entire game. Now, right here, you see here he goes, man. Now, one of the things you'll see here, I rolled the other side. And I'm still able to throw that. I'm still able to get that man switch. So I can roll right or I can roll left. I don't think a lot of people know that. But that is one little hidden thing about bunch tight end. You can roll to either side and get this separation if you wanted to. So you don't have to just roll uh, to the right side. But because he goes to man-to-man -to -man coverage here, we're going to go to that play right there. Hit Devontae Adams on that crossing route. And you see that it's just hard. I mean, we've thrown for 344. We've only thrown three incomplete passes. And if you actually think about what the defense is having to face, like this is a really, really hard offense to stop. Um, I mean, it just is. Like the, the reality is it's just really, really hard to stop this offense. Um, this is another setup that I like. I don't run this a ton, and I absolutely missed him wide open. Uh, right there I almost threw a pick because I was just – I'm playing a little bit loose right now on offense. But um, – the, the, what I missed was my slant route. My slant route was wide open, uh, so much so that I'm going to go back to it again. This play mesh is super, super effective, um, especially for situations like this where you're just trying to change things up. Um, now, that time he actually ran with it, which is fine, and he literally dropped everybody back in coverage. The problem when you drop back everybody and you literally blitz nobody is the route bounces. You never know what they're going to do. You never know what the luck that we're going to get, and right there we got a great cut from our route bounce, and we're able to get over um, and, and basically get ourselves in a good position. Now, when I'm in the red zone here, one of my favorite plays to run is basically this little concept right here. I like to put the running back on an option route. I think that's really, really good in the red zone. Uh, obviously, I love motion slants. Um, 
And let's see here. I think we got that motion slant right over there. Unfortunately, Aaron Rodgers overthrew him by a mile. I think I've had a couple of different overthrows this so far this game from Aaron Rodgers that has absolutely come back to bite me a little bit. So um, some of that's on me trying to kind of, you know, high point things or just trying to be a little bit too safe with where I'm throwing it. So that's going to be um, something that I'm going to have to, you know, kind of adapt to. But if you watch this crossing route, you see right there he goes so far back in the end zone. Now right there I throw a pick because that's just a terrible read. And that's exactly what we couldn't have happen. I mean, we talked about it. We said the one thing that would be really, really detrimental to us is to have an interception. Um, obviously we're still up by a little bit. But by throwing that interception, it gives him life. And I believe, if I remember correctly, he actually is going to come out with the ball. So those are just some little things that are going to probably cost us if we're not careful. So uh, we really need a good defensive drive right here. Um, as you can see, he's coming out in five wide, so we're going to come out in this. Now, really, against five wide, one of the things that I like to do, um, and Jair Alexander makes a great play, one of the things that I also like to do against five wide just to kind of help um, – Meant, you know, just kind of help a little bit with the five wide is I almost always, when I face five wide, you're going to see I'm going to audible to this almost every single time. Um, now right here, he's going to throw to Amari Cooper, and of course, I am going to give up a huge, huge play. Um, if we can just hold him to three, that would be great. And that's a huge, huge tackle right there. Now he has four seconds with, uh, again, he's only, he's down by 20 points, so he pretty much has to go for this. And as you can see here, he is going to go for this. Now, he's coming out in goal line. When I face goal line, I personally really like this 4-4 defense. Um, I think it just gets great shoots. Uh, I just I don't know. I mean, it might not, but I just blitz everybody. And, of course, as I say that, I get QB snuck. Um, didn't expect the QB sneak right there, but he did go with it. So we're going to go with free safety blitz on this next play out of 4-4. You know, again, I'm not an expert on 4-4, but it is my preferred. I used to be back at Madden 13. Um, it is my preferred defense um, to run in the red zone just because everything's constrained down here. He's, You know, you're going to get pretty good pressure with this setup right here. Um, and, of course, that was my user responsibility. I should have had a pick on that play. And we end up giving up a touchdown. Now, he's probably going to go for two again. He's got some life, and that's what we're talking about. You know, just these little things that um, make a big difference. I mean, I should have definitely shaded up. There's a lot of things I should have done differently on this drive. Um, you know, just haven't really played very good since the first, you know, since that last touchdown. Um, he was able to get in the end zone, and that was huge for him. You know, that was huge for him. Here, hits the tight end, does a good job on the out route. And he's going to go into half, only down by 12, and he gets the ball. So I really need to do a good job of closing the game out here, um, not not being so aggressive on defense. I'm probably being a little bit too aggressive with the press coverage. Um, you know, So I've got to kind of maybe back off of that a little bit, just force him to have to run you know, quick slants, drags, uh, things underneath, not be able to just kind of you know lob it up to Amari Cooper and pray, which really has been his strategy, uh, and it's actually worked really, really well for him up to this point. So defensively, I'm going to get back into that 3-3-5. And if he could, he, he might sit in this 5 wide a lot. Uh, I'm going to switch and kind of go down into this zone coverage look uh, right here. And as you can see, it just kind of creates this. Now, if he motions anybody over or across, you're going to see that they're going to go. But you really, because of the, of the play, you don't have to worry too much about the crossing route. Now, right there, um, that was fine. I mean, I don't like the fact that he's rolling out with Dak, buying a lot of time. I've got to I, – I think the way to play this guy is truly to blitz him. I don't think he's going to be able to handle the blitz. Um, the biggest thing is we just can't let Amari Cooper kill us uh, with a little lob streak or something like that. So right here, fully anticipating that he's going to throw to Amari Cooper. So my job here is to just kind of get over here, make this play, and there we go. Defense was able to get – um, at least one incomplete pass uh, for the first time in a little bit. And we're going to do, we're going to go back to this over and over again. We're going to continue to pressure him. We're going to continue to try to force him to make mistakes. He hasn't really shown, like when, when we blitz, it's pretty much chuck it to Amari Cooper or Zeke Elliott and pray. So that's kind of his strategy. So, you know, that's, we're, we're going to try to take advantage of that a little bit. Here he's got Amari Cooper the slot. you got to believe he's going back to that setup. There's the post route. And that time... Holman makes a huge interception there because we shaded him up. You, so, you notice probably he didn't press. We shaded him up, got the, got the coverage on him, and that's a huge turnover. And now the offense needs to come back on the field 
and we really need one of those drives where we just close. We just absolutely close the game. We got a shadow of a doubt. We are the more dominant team, and we need to prove that on this drive. And we're going to prove that with the very first play. Devontae Adams over the top with a huge laser um, right over the top. And we're going to go right into bunch, tight end uh, cross, PA all cross, right off of this. And the reason why we're moving so quick is just because, again, we need to make a statement that we and we fumble the ball. That is a huge turnover. Another break for this guy. That is a huge, huge turnover right there. We're driving. We're clicking on all cylinders. The game is over, and we fumble the ball. We've outgained this guy by almost 200 yards, and somehow um, he is still in the game. So we have got to lock down right here. Uh, and really, let's see here. He's going to go with some screen. Uh, looking like interesting play call. And we're able to come in and uh, and get a sack. This brings us up a second and 14 situation. Ball is on the 17-yard line. We just mainly have to watch Zeke here. Uh, we're shading coverage over top. We're going to go get this crossing route. You see there's the instant pressure uh, from the Mike Blitz 3, one of the best blitzes in Madden 21. We talk about it a lot in the 335 defensive ebook, which if you haven't picked it up yet, that link is in the description. But... So far, so good, and we just have to close. We have to close right here. Uh, this is a huge, huge, huge down for us. Um, this is, uh, I think this is five wide. Last time he was in this five wide, he went to this uh, crossing route to the tight end. So we're going to, try. we tried to man that up. We didn't get it manned up in time. So we're going to just user it ourselves. We're going to send the spy, and he's going to throw right at our user. We're going to get that pick, and let's see here if we can't close, uh, close out. Savage, you savage. Way to close the ball game for us with that big pick six. That's absolutely huge. That is a dagger type of play. We'll see what happens if he comes back from that. But there's that 3-3-5 wide defense. Again, forcing people into making mistakes. That's what the defense does. It gives you the same alignment. It gives you the same look. It gives you the ability to cross man, to stop the run, to get the best personnel possible on the field. But also to send pressure when you need to send pressure and to have coverage when you need to have coverage. In that key situation there, uh, we went coverage. We had gone pressure, 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 and then we went coverage, right? Again, I like the philosophy when you're doing coverage or pressure. I personally like the philosophy of jab, 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 right hook. Sometimes that might mean pressure, 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 then coverage. And sometimes it might be coverage, 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 and then pressure. So give them the same look three different times and then um, basically from the same exact look, do something a little bit different. And that's what we did right here. So we're going right back to that pressure setup um, right here, showing pressure off the edge. Another thing we could do is we could run some, some man coverage as well. We're going to jump back down on that slant. That was just a little bit too slow on a user on my part. But we got to be feeling good. We forced five uh, turnovers right here. We're going to continue to stick with this Mike Blitz 3 uh, or Mike Blitz O. And the reason why is because it's just giving coverage. Coverage, um, man coverage, man coverage, man coverage. Jab, 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 right hook. Jab, 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 right hook. So far we've gone pressure, pressure, and we're going to go pressure one more time. Now, again, if he continues to throw, um, we're trying to get him comfortable with the man coverage. And then we're going to basically adjust on him at the right time. So that's really what we're trying to do here. There's another big sack. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go coverage. So we're going to go same exact look, but this time we're running coverage, as you can see right here. I basically have to, absolutely have to, take anything over the middle of the field. That is 100% my territory. Uh, and you see here the crossing around to the tight end. Everything's taken away, and we end up getting a coverage sack. So we've gone pressure, pressure, pressure coverage now on this third and 19 we're actually going to mix it up a little bit in both directions we're going to send pressure from uh, a zone coverage look and so really remember our responsibility is this right side does the tight end go up the seam here he does we use it with savage savage you savage i think that's his third or his second interception on the day Huge play by the defense. Offense gets back on the field and gives the offense another opportunity to be able to go down and just make plays uh, for the for the game. So here we go, curl flat corner, one of my favorite setups. Um, he goes cover zero once again. Uh, and right there, we didn't quite get the separation we wanted to. That's on me a little bit. I did not put the routes in the right sequence. I kind of thought he might have switched his own. He doesn't. He stays with me in coverage. So good play by him. And we're just going to get out and go again. And here's PA boot over on the run. Rogers throws an absolute laser 
to Devontae Adams on that PA cross. Absolute laser. Uh, right here, we're going to go to curl flat corner. Now, he's showing man coverage. Uh, again, he was a man coverage last time. Probably going to be a man coverage again, so we see that. Um, he does shade over top, but unfortunately, now see here again, I just drift, and then he comes and goes, gets me, as you can see, just like clockwork. This time, Robert Tunyon doesn't fumble the ball. And as you can see, we've thrown for almost 500 yards, um, and that's really, really consistent with this scheme. You will throw for a lot of yards. It's almost guaranteed, and you should throw for a lot of yards. This is the best uh, passing offense in the entire game. As you can see right here, just easy reads, easy lasers, carving them up. Aaron Rodgers over 500 yards passing. The offense has scored over 40 points. I mean, this bunch tight end offense is absolutely insane. If you haven't picked it up yet, there is a link in the description for you to be able to pick up this gun bunch tight end offense it's super short to the point and super super effective we're not going to waste any of your time with this offense as far as giving you fluff we're giving you straight meat and potatoes with this ebook right down to it what's the best offense in madden and we share it with you um really easy 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 to pick up too it's easy to understand easy to run so if you haven't picked it up yet links in the description but defense right here this is where we just close right we continue jab, 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 right hook, jab, 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 right hook, jab, 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 right hook, right? That's our strategy on defense. It's kind of our strategy on offense too, but it's definitely our strategy on uh, on defense here. So we're going to shade our coverage up. And right here, we kind of messed up with one of our zones, so we need to kind of make it a little bit of an adjustment. And for some reason, we can't man this guy, so we have to take this tight end. And we got roasted over the top. Dalton Schultz. Um, that was probably just, I mean, honestly, that was a user mistake. I think I audibled out of something, into something, got my coverage mixed up, busted a coverage, and he ends up uh, getting us over the top. Uh, right here, he got me. I didn't think he'd go for two. He's down by 20. Uh, I think he's still down. I think he's down by, by 20. Now he's down by 18. So he's down by three scores still, um, which is really, again, three scores is a comfortable lead. It's a cushion. As long as our offense keeps scoring at the rate that it's scoring, we're going to be in a good um, situation. I personally, when I run this offense, I mean, you are in the run-heavy playbook, so you do have some good um, you do have some good run plays. I don't like to chew clock. I've never liked to chew clock. I just want to basically come out and execute. This offense is all about execution. We talk about that a ton in the ebook. Um, and I literally just want to come out here and I want to run the offense 100 times and I want to run it perfectly 100 times. That's literally how I want to do it. I, if you, The more reps you give me on the offensive side of the ball, the more I can pretty much guarantee you the offense will have success. The more this offense gets a look at certain defenses, the better it's going to be for it. Uh, that's just my opinion. So you can take that or leave it. But right here he actually ended up getting good, uh, good coverage. Um, so we'll just throw that away. And he's even himself doing a lot of man coverage. Um, so we're just going to kind of stick with P If he's going to run man coverage on us all game, we'll just stick with this right here um, because he can't stop this route. He's he's not going to be able to stop. In man coverage, it's going to be very difficult for him to stop the tight end fade and the crossing route. So we're just going to stick with this right here. He's not containing Rodgers. He's not really doing anything that's going to make me worried about him containing. So uh, right here, and, and right there, I, I released the tight end way too late. That's fine. We're going to go no huddle. Um, I, am, you know, am I worried a little bit about fatigue? Yeah, I mean, I could probably call time out here or do something, um, you know, as far as fatigue goes. But right here, good defense by him. And we're actually going to take a timeout here just to kind of make sure that everybody's not fatigued. I think part of the reason his coverage is bagging me so much is just because we're a little bit fatigued on the offensive side of the ball. So that being said, we're going to go to a little bit more of a, a setup that's designed specifically to just have multiple answers against cover two man. So we're going to go to that setup right here and see what happens. And, yep, our motion slant does a really, really good job of getting wide open. The one problem is it kind of stopped at the end of it. Um, which is not a big deal. Um, we're just going to run this setup here, and instead of using Austin on a drag, this time we're going to use him on uh, a motion over slant so that if he runs man, and here, this is a laser from Rodgers on the sideline, but Devontae Adams doesn't get his feet down. I think that's complete crap um, that he was able to stop us right there, but it is what it is. So we need to get it back into man coverage. Uh, and just simple, simple, simple defense right here, I think, uh, for the remainder of the game. Just kind of keep coverage. 
um, just close the game out. We got three minutes left. You know, as long as we don't give up anything over the over the you know over a touchdown, that's really what we're trying to do. Uh, and here he's going to throw it up. Perry's going to get the pick, and that should be a pick six for the defense. As you can see, this man coverage is just tough to beat, uh, especially when you do the proper shading. So he gets us right down into the red zone for a scoring opportunity. Now, one of the things that I really like about having the run-heavy playbook is the fact that you're able to come down into these types of sets here and have plays like fullback dive, halfback blunt dive. I think this guy has literally ran dollar three two six every single play, even in the red zone. He's running dollar three two six, so that's not going to be able to stop strong tight, as you can see there. Easy touchdown for the offense and puts ourselves in a really really good position just to keep scoring, keep executing uh, defensively. We're going to come out, we're going to play, um, we're going to play kind of our standard coverage, you know, and just force him to have to work up and down the field on us a little bit here. Uh, but so far, defense has played. Fairly well. I think where we, our defense has kind of, where we've struggled a little bit on defense is with the different types of looks he's given us. He'll be in five wide, then he'll be in doubles, then he'll be in trips, then he'll be in bunch, then he'll be in, you know, eye tight. And so because of the multiple looks, sometimes that can throw me off as a, just a player. That's something that I need to get better at defensively. But as you can see here, if he's going to run five wide all game, uh, which seems like that's going to be his strategy, uh, we're going to be able to pretty much take that away. As you can see here, nothing open. I, I kind of wanted him to be able to get that ball off. He's thrown seven interceptions on this 3 through 5 wide defense. Absolutely uh, phenomenal, phenomenal performance. Now, right here, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to basically contain him, just try to keep him in the pocket, really. Um, and, 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 of course, we didn't do a great job. But throw out a sack once again. That should have been a pick. Throws in the triple coverage. Um, somehow he got the 370. I think it's just because we gave up a couple of bombs over the top uh, with this guy. But anyway, so uh, right here, I didn't get the, I didn't get any of my adjustments off here, and he's gonna get a laser. That's just bad defense by me. Um, the fact that he's able to throw a slant for a first down, also the fact that this accelerated clock runoff is not very much. It's interesting. And right there, a little corner route to Mari. That's fine. Um, that's that's okay. That's not a big deal. We just have to basically take Amari Cooper away. Like, whatever Amari Cooper does, it, it's almost as simple as, like, literally just going and getting him. Here he's going to go up top. Savage, you savage. That's his third pick on the day. Looks like he's going to get out, break this tackle, and let's see if he can kind of bounce it out top. But, again, that's going to bring us into our two-minute warning. And, again, offense is going to get one more opportunity. Looks like this guy is going to go ahead and quit out here. If you have any questions about the offense, go ahead and text me. My number is 812 216-3644. Also, if you want to get the full offense that I ran, it's in the description. And if you want to get the full defense I ran, it is in the description as well.